Hi guys, I have just been having a bit of a play around at home today and I'm gonna just play around a little bit more. I'm gonna use the original face mold I did and I thought I would just film it and then you guys can see what I'm up to because I realized I haven't done a video with these for a while. So I'm just having a bit of a play around. This one's not finished yet, but I wanted to have a go at kind of making some little creatures, little monster faces almost. Um, so they're all gonna be pretty similar, but we'll film it and then you guys can see what I'm up to. Yeah, let's begin. So for this particular one, I'm just gonna use the green Saratino. So I've put a bit of paste in one earlier just cause it needs a bit of time to firm it up, but I'll show you putting it in again. And don't forget guys, I do have a few videos already on using this particular mold and I'll put a link in the video now. So that if you want to check out those other ones, you can do as well. I'm gonna get it out using two sticks. So I'm gonna push it fairly far in. This one I've actually put polystyrene ball in as well, which is just gonna make it a little bit firmer and it's been setting for 10 minutes. Then we're gonna pull. And the reason I put two sticks in it this time is because usually I only used to put one in, but the head twists around quite a bit sometimes. So I put it in the wrong mold. Never mind, we can still we can still use that. Also, I haven't pushed it in very firmly um, for this particular one because it's a monster, it's not gonna matter. So let's move that to one side. Let's do it in the correct mold, guys. The one that I used this one for. Well, we can still do something with that. So that's the mold that doesn't have eyes. Okay, guys. So let's put a bit of paste in this one. So you want to, if you find that you, it's sticking a lot, you want to dust your mold with a bit of corn flour. Just make sure there's no creases and cracks on your icing. And we're going to push that really firmly into the mold. And I mean really firmly because the nose, as you can tell with this one, it's not very big. And the mouth area, you know, it's so small, you really have to push it in firmly for it to go into those bits of the mold. Don't worry that it looks a mess here. You just want to worry about getting that in really firmly. And you can add a polystyrene ball into the back of the head, although this ball is probably just a little bit too big. We might be able to get it in, but I don't think there's a lot of space for anything else if we get this ball in. So ideally you want like a two centimeter ball. This one's a bit bigger than that. We're gonna experiment and see how what this one looks like with the large ball in. I'm gonna put a bit of water in there to stick this in. Let's seal up the paste at the back. Pull off any extra. And your best guys just having a bit of a play around as well because I always find if I'm playing around, sometimes come up with things that, you know, I might not have come up with. If not, I'm just putting a bit of water on to smooth out the seams. But to be honest, you might be best not smoothing out the seams and just putting a bit of hair on the back of the head. Then you're not getting it all wet. Okay, so we want to give that a little bit of firming up time. So you can pop it in the fridge for 10 minutes if you want, but if you leave it in the fridge, don't leave it in the fridge for too long because it will get condensation on it and then it will just become so sticky and then it's, it's just really difficult to work with. So we're gonna push two skewers in just to stop it spinning. So remember, if you've only got one in, when you pull it, it could spin. So let's just pop that out. So I actually did that without giving it 10 minutes to dry, but that's fine. But because the head is wet at the back, I can't just put it down because she's going to stick to things. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rest it into the mold like that one is. And I'm just going to find some corn flour actually first, just to stop it getting so sticky at the back. Okay, so this one's got a large head at the back because the polystyrene ball was a little bit big that I used. This one has got polystyrene ball in the back of the head and it's about two centimetres across. No wider than that. Oh wait, I've just found a smaller one. We'll put that again in one. You don't have to have polystyrene in the back as well, guys. In fact, I'm just gonna show you. Let's just lay her down there for a second. I'm just gonna show you doing it where you just put extra paste in and then pull it out. So there's plenty to grab onto. And you can put corn flour in the mold if you're worried about it sticking. You can use a brush, you don't have to use your finger. So I've got a little bit needed there, but I want a bit more than that. You'll notice if you've not used Saracino before when you first get it, it's quite hard and crumbly. And it's fairly warm here today, so it will warm up and go stretchy quite quickly, but it is always a bit crumbly when you first get it. Um, it just takes a bit of kneading to get it going. I do really like this colour. So you see the heat from your hands starts to soften it. So it's still like when I pull it, it's not quite kneaded enough just yet. So you can see this one stretches differently because this one has been kneaded a little bit longer. If you find whatever model you're making has got cracks in it, and it's splitting, it's probably that it's not kneaded enough. But then also sometimes if you over knead it and it becomes very warm, it can kind of crinkle as well when you're working with it. So just watch out for that. Just make sure it's gone back to room temperature when you start doing your modeling with it. 
Okay, so that's looking better now. And I know I've got more than I need. I'm gonna weigh it just to tell you how much I have actually got. But don't worry if yours isn't the exact same amount. So I've got about 50 grams. So like I was saying before, just make sure you've got a bit at the front that's nice and smooth that doesn't really have crack lines in. Although I guess if you're doing a monster, it might not matter too much if you've got crack lines in. We're gonna press in really deep. Really press in into sort of the head where we know their mouth and nose is. And then can you see, I've got all this extra paste here, like way more than I need. But if you find that you struggle getting it out the way I did it last time, if you have it this way, just try and hold this firmly here. You can also leave it in for 10 minutes if you want. Avoid pressing down at this side. And we just pull. Because I've got all this to hold on to, it just makes it that bit easier. Like I'm not squashing the face too much. If you only have a little bit extra, you tend to find you pull the face in and it becomes a bit thinner. You can give that 10 minutes to come up if you want. Or if like me, you're impatient, you can just cut the back off straight away. And I mean, the bonus of it having a flat back to it is that I can just put it on the work surface to work on it. This one, where it's rounded, I can't just work on it easily that way because it wants to roll over. Like I would have to pop that back, back to front kind of in my mold just to make it a little bit easier for me to work on it. So this is the one without eyes. This is the one with eyes. And like I say, I haven't um, done this one very well in the mold, but that's fine. I don't mind on this particular one because I don't want this monster to have a very big nose. At least I don't think I want it to anyway. And let's have a look at eyes. So it's already got some eyes in, but I'm still thinking I'm going to play around with the tool. So on this one, I used one of these tools. So that's the T-Look tool. And it's the larger size ones. So there's bigger and small ones. Let's see if I can find the others to show you guys. They don't come all four together. You get like um, two in a set. So like two small ones or two big ones. And they're slightly different kind of shapes. Let's see if I can show you on here. And they say R and L for right and left. So that's all another shapes. You'd think I'd know my right from my left, wouldn't you? And I still get it wrong. And that's the other shape. And then they just, they have them the same again, but in larger. So I used that one for this one and I just sort of pressed it into the face. And you're probably thinking, well, it's already got eye holes or eyes marked in. I put this to the, lined it up with the very bottom edge. In fact, I'll do it again on this one to show you. So hang on, let me just make, make sure I've got the right one and that the flick on the outside is flicked up outwards to the outer edge. So I'm gonna line it with the bottom of the eye and press in like that. So you can still see the top of the eye that was in before, but I think that looks fine because it actually looks just like an eyelid. So let's have a go with the other shaped one. I can never work out which way it goes though. Right, so I think the R goes to the top. So that would mean it would go that way. Now this one actually is pretty much the same shape as the eye that's already in there, I would say. So we might not get much of an eyelid. But the thing is with these, you can angle them where you want as well. So you can have them tilted up at an angle. We've got a little bit of an eyelid. And if you want to make it more prominent, just go back over with your dressing tool. And you might not want it more prominent. It really is up to you. I guess the key, your monster could have more sunken eyes as well. So if you wanted to, you could even press, you know, your fingers in a little bit more. Could even put these back in again now. And can you see if I press the forehead down, it's making it a bit more alien-like, but can you see the size of the head starts to get bigger as you start to squash down that forehead, even though it's made with the same mold. So you can play around with the, with the shape of the face a little bit. Like, you know, you don't have to keep it exactly like what it was. You know, you might wanna make it more rounded and more angular. So let's bring this one narrower here. So that more alien shaped. So can you see the side of the jaw? We're tapering this in. So can you see it's becoming much more narrow down there? I'm just gonna press it just sort of where the temples are as well. In there. 
So again, can you see this shape changing? I don't know, you're probably thinking, well, why use mold if you're gonna change the shape? It just, it, it just means, you know, if I want to play around with a few heads and a few different styles, and I, I don't wanna spend ages starting each head from scratch, playing with that mold just helps me a little bit, just, you know, gives me a bit of a head start and saves me a little bit of time on it. So let's leave this one with a nose. And then I think this one, what we're gonna do is just like the other one, we're gonna try and, so this one here, I've sort of rubbed it out a little bit. So I'm just really gently above the nostrils, rubbing with my finger. And it's just gonna kind of get rid of that nose for us a little bit there, like that. So we can still see the nostrils or the holes for the nostrils slightly, but not much. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press it in a lot here, kind of each side of the mouth. You see when I press upwards, it sort of lifts the cheeks slightly as well. And I'm gonna go in a little bit more here. Can you see again, that's changed the shape of my face. And you know, you might not want to change the shape of your face, have a bit of a play around. And then if you want to bring those nostrils out so they look again a bit more like maybe reptile-y, I'm just gonna pull them up and out so that it's almost like two little sort of flicked lines. Like so. And we can also give her a bit more definition on the nose if we want to. So here, you see above, sort of above the eye, going slightly down the bridge of the nose. I'm just gonna nudge in. Can you see in across a little bit? Hopefully this shows for you guys. I'm gonna take my ring off because I'm stabbing the other lady in the face with it. And you know, it might be that instead of giving her eyebrows, we want to pull this up quite a lot so that she's got like a ridge, almost where the eyebrow area would be. Can you guys see that there? I'm just gonna put back in her little eyelid because as I've done that, the eyelid has started to come out a little bit. And if you think it's not very prominent, you could go from the top of the head downwards and nudge in a little bit this way as well. So that's gonna bring that out a little bit more there. Do the same on this side. So kind of rubbing down and pressing in a little bit. Just watch out if you have put a large polystyrene ball in the head because you don't wanna press in too much. So it kind of changes the shape of the head a little bit at the top as well, but that's fine. And then maybe we could even press it in in this middle bit, a little bit here. I'm just gonna use my finger to kind of rub in there. So it just completely changes like the shape. She's looking a bit more kind of creature or alien-like now. And you know, if we wanna make the um, jawline a bit more angular, we can do. Although I don't know if she needs it with the forehead being fairly angular. I might try and just pinch in a little bit here at the cheeks. I meant cheeks, not jawline. I can't remember if I just said jawline. So, Rub in here and then at the side of what would be the cheekbone. Can you see that giving her a bit more shape there? More definition. She definitely looks a bit more kind of lizardy like, doesn't she now? And then I'm just putting in the line for where her lips were again. So because I've already been moving around, I've kind of lost her lips a little bit, but that's fine. I'll just press them back in lightly with the modeling tool. Now, do we leave this one fairly plain and just do sort of more realistic or more human-like features, but maybe change the colors? Maybe we could do a bit of texturizing on this one a little bit more. So on this one, I don't know if you can see, I just used a piping nozzle and we just pressed in to make a little circle indentations on her face. Okay, let's give this one some little eye sockets. I'm just going to do, what should we do with her nose? I'm just going to do two little holes for her nose in this one. I might open up her mouth a little bit as well. So I'm just putting a craft knife in there to you know, open that up a little bit. I might even use some of the different eyes. These are the Sylvia Mancini ones. Actually, I'm going to use these ones. These are the uh, the extra, extra small set ones. 
And I'm just trying to work out whether we go leave a big gap between the nose and the eyes. I might leave a bigger gap. So what I'm going to do, usually I tend to go fairly low down with the eyes because it looks a bit more feminine. Um, but if we make them a little bit higher, so I'm just rubbing in a little bit higher up on the face. And then let's press these in. If you're not sure which way up they go, if you have the S, M uh, lettering upright, then it should be okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to press these in fairly firmly. Just don't press so far that it goes into the bridge of the nose, because if you press in really hard, this bit will dent into the, the nose or the bridge of the nose. I'm just going to press a little bit harder, actually, guys. There we go. And I'm going to put in a bit more of a line here again, a bit like we did on the other one. Let's bring them at different levels. Let's bring this one down towards the nose a bit more. So we get a more prominent line at the side of the nose, each side. So it's stretched out the nose. It's made her nose look much longer. And I think that's okay. I'm going to just press in a little bit here again. So again, she's got like sharper jawline. Just nudging her in a bit there. And I'm thinking for this one, we might stick extra bits onto her. So maybe some lines coming around and down the cheeks. So if I roll a nice thin piece, I'm going to put a little bit of water on that cheek area. Not too much, just a little bit. And I'm going to press this little piece up and onto there. Oops, that one doesn't want to stick. So kind of a little bit under the eye. And I'm going to take it. I'm going to put some on the side of the face because it doesn't want to stick. Let's see, we go from there. Up and kind of round a little bit. We'll do the same again. Just taking a little piece. I might even sort of squash it a little bit flatter as well. Oh, it's probably stuck to me instead. So we're going to take it just a little bit lower down from that one. Around the side of the face. It's going to kind of join up with that from there, I reckon. Just make sure it's pressed on nice and firmly. Okay, let's put a third one on. I think the third one will be the last one we kind of have space for. I'm going to keep it a bit thicker at this end, but nice and thin at the bottom end. Put a bit more water on here. Let's pop it on there. I'm going to have it so it doesn't come quite as far down as those ones. Sticking to my finger, it is quite warm today, and so everything wants to stick to me. Okay, so I'm going to take it up to bring it to meet with those ones, and then press it on firmly, and then I'm just going to open it up a little bit here. Gradually, so I'll blend it into the face. So we can just about see them sort of coming out a bit wider, almost like gills a little bit. Not quite, but a little bit like them. Just blend it into the head a bit there. And then we'll try and do the same on the other side. I think I might even try and give this one some fangs maybe. So if I cut into the mouth a little bit here, just gives me a bit more of a gap. And then where I'm going to put the fangs, this bottom lip is going to have to kind of press down a little bit. So I'm going to have to nudge that in a tiny bit there and there. And I'll just pull the top lip out a little bit where they're going to have to sit as well. Otherwise, we won't have space to put them in. So she's probably going to look a little bit weird now for a bit. I feel like maybe she should have a pointed chin or even a squarer chin. Maybe we could make her a squarer chin just by rubbing this bottom bit here.
don't know, like evil mermaids or monsters or whatever they are. I've got bags. Let's give them some bags. Some eye bags. Let's put a little line under the eye. Because they're tired. Does this lady have lines as well? Okay, now we need to decide what colour eyes. I'm tempted to give one of them just black eyes. I'm going to use my pen. So I'm going to use the edible fractal pen for this one. Because this one I haven't pushed the eyes that far down. So I don't think it's going to matter if I don't um, stick more paste in them. So let's do this with a pen. Just make sure it's not too soft. Like if it's too soft, you might press in and make indentations with your pen. So just be very mindful of that. I think it's set enough that I can use the pen easily with it. Okay, one done. Let's do the other one. Oh no, should she have black lips as well? Or is black lips and black eyes too much? We'll go for different colour lips. Okay, let's go. Eggplant. You don't have to use the pens, guys. The Bear in mind that because it's green that I'm drawing on, it's going to look a different colour. Whereas if I was drawing it on white, it would look like eggplant because it's not white, it's going to look a bit different. In fact, it looks almost black with me drawing it on green. Yeah, they look almost black. And a bit wonky. <laughs> just gonna colour the crease in her eyebrow in in the pen. Just the thing is gonna make it a little bit more obvious than if we put powder in. I might put powder in as well, but I'm definitely gonna add some of this. I'm gonna add a little bit around the bottom edge as well. Maybe even just join it up here. I'm just gonna dampen my brush a tiny bit and then so spread that pen colour down so that it stays a bit darker in the line itself. But then gradually it gets a bit paler. If you put too much on, you want to take some off. Just run a damp brush over the top and keep wiping it over and the colour will just gradually come off. You can do it the opposite direction as well, going upwards. even bring the colour down the nose and to just around the nostrils and that's only very faint like you probably won't be able to see that very well on camera that I've done that. And do the same with the bottom bit of a line and blend it out a little bit. So if I want to darken any areas as well, you can use powder or you can just use a little brush on your pen. Let's just dampen that brush a tiny bit. And guys, I do sell the brushes and the pens and everything on the website. So we just put a little bit in the corners of the mouth. Okay, and if it's a bit dark, just dilute down a little bit more with your brush with a bit of water on. And as well, you can dab it off with your finger a little bit. It's going to go into those nostrils and around the edge a little bit. So again, that's just going to darken around the nose. And then I'm going to run the paint line up here to meet with the colour that I put on earlier. Okay, so can you see she's, I don't know how well it actually does show on camera. She's got little bits of colour on there. She does look like an alien, doesn't she? And of course we could do the lips in the turquoise, which is quite a nice colour. 
And you don't have to have a cupid's bow as well. You can just go up to a bit of an arch in the middle of your lip. And you know, it's up to you how big or small you want to do those lips. So even though I've used a mold, I can usually color beyond the edge of the lips if I want, or even not quite as far as the edge of the lips to get what I want from them. And I'm gonna just keep coloring the lip up to the edge a little bit. And it will look different when we put the teeth in, because the teeth will cover quite a bit of this up. Let's do this one, green lips. Although I think it's probably not gonna look hugely different to those ones. It looks a little bit different. So I'm just catching on the edge of the mouth. Okay, so let's add some color powder to them. Give them a bit of shading. And then we'll pop the eyes in as well in a bit. So this one, because I've wet it with the pen, I would just need to make sure it was really dry before I added any more kind of powders onto that, if I wanted to add more powders onto it. I think with this one actually, just while I remember, I'm gonna draw some dots and things on this one. So we're gonna do kind of scaly bits. And they don't all have to be the same size and they don't all have to be rounded either, guys. Make sure you go as far on the side of the head as you can. Just because at the moment, I don't know where I'm going to put hair. Or they might not even have hair. This video is more just for playing around with heads. She's like a sea turtle. <laughs> she looks like a sea turtle with these little bits on. Should we put some on her cheeks a little bit, maybe? You can add a bit of other colour just around the outer edges a little bit. If you don't want those dots all to be too similar colour-wise, you could go for... Slightly different colour around the outer edge. And of course, if you like them as they are, you don't have to add an edge of colour. You might want to go for something that's a completely different colour because this one, the blue is not an overly strong colour compared to the turquoise that I put on. So if you look close, you can see it, but with oh, shaky hands, from a distance, you won't see much difference between, between those. I feel like this one looks okay without eyebrows. So I feel like she needs really shiny eyes, so I might well put some glaze in her eyes later. So I think we could enhance her cheeks more if we just did a colour in here. So let's go for a green that's a little bit darker than what she is on her face. Don't go too dark at first if you're not sure, or if you're not sure, just on the back of the head, and then you can see the colour difference. Gonna stop her looking quite as bright as well when I add these dusts to her. Oh, eye area here, I'm gonna just darken a little bit. But I'm gonna go a bit darker still. Gonna go down that centre bit. A little bit on the sides. Maybe even a more turquoisey colour. You can also add a bit of pink if you want it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose one of these to turn into a mermaid, which is another project that I'm working on at the moment as well. So I've been trying to take part in the mermaid challenge that artists do on um, Instagram that I've been following. And I've been filming the things the mermaids have been making and I'm thinking of making them into a class. I want to go a bit darker on this one. So we'll go for that smaller brush that we had. And we're going to try and brush this onto the eyelids. Mainly in that crease on the eyelid. Okay, let's try her with yellow eyes. So we're not going to need very much. I'm just going to use the modeling paste again. We're going to need a very tiny amount. Let's see, I'm just going to roll it out and see if it looks like it's going to fit. I think that might be about right. I reckon this is too small to weigh. So it's just a tiny, tiny pinch. In fact, if I roll them both into balls, then I'll be able to see if they're a similar size. But 
I'm going to roll them so there's a thin point on each end to about the length of the eye. That one looks like it might be a tiny bit bigger. Let's pinch a tiny, tiny bit off. These are pretty bright yellow, these eyes. And I'm going to put a tiny bit of water in each eye. Not too much, just a little bit. Then we're just going to gently push this around until it fills the space. Just be really gentle with it. Just make sure they don't stick out too much from the side. And I think what I'm going to do is add a bit more colour under the eye as well. So just with a small brush now, you can bring it into sort of this corner as well. And now I can't decide whether to give out sort of like pupils that are a bit more lizard-like or not. I'm going to put yellow in this one and then what we're going to do is we'll do one with like more lizard-like ones and one with slightly more cartoony human -y pupils. Okay, so this one, oh, it should be more lizard-like. Let's do this one more lizard-like. And let's go for here in the middle. If I can get it in the middle, it's not quite in the middle. So I'm just using my pen, but you could use um, paints if you wanted, guys, like an edible paint. I'll just go a little bit bigger. Just so it reaches the bottom of the eye. These ones I might put a bit brown on as well, actually. So maybe she could be looking to the side a little bit. In fact, you know what? I like the brown. I'm going to put brown on this one as well. I know the idea of these is that they're supposed to be really different, but I uh, end up putting the same things on each one. Just putting a little brown line kind of around the edge. I'm leaving a little gap of yellow as well, though. And what I'll we'll do is just try and soften the brown line. Okay, so these ones I'm going to put tiny black pupil in if I can. So much smaller than that last one I've just done. If you go too dark with the brown, you can take it off by just gently rubbing a slightly damp brush on it. Too wet though, and it's all just going to smudge everywhere. Just go with a slightly darker line around the very outer edge. Just going to go with a bit of dark blue on the top lip a little bit. I'm going to darken her nostrils a tiny, tiny bit. A very small amount, a tiny bit of powder on my brush. I feel like she needs something sort of to emphasize that this is kind of her brow area as well. So just above that bit that pokes out, I'm going to put a bit darker green. It's kind of the shape of, is it Jim Carrey's The Mask? Is it that? It reminds me a lot of that. It's a long time since I've seen it, so maybe it's not the same as that. Let's give this one some eyeshadow as well. I'm going to go purple for 
this one. So following, you know, the line of the original eye from the mold. Just above that line now. Let's move the nostrils in. Like this one, maybe should have some stripes or something on her head somewhere. lines and let's add a bit of another color as well maybe some purple both look quite lizard like okay we still need to do this one but i'm gonna because i get a bit overexcited i'm gonna put lashes on some of these ones i don't know if this one needs lashes though i think i feel like this one looks good without I guess it, it does look quite like a turtle. Well, she doesn't look like a turtle, but the spots on her head remind me of some sort of turtle. Ooh, teeth, the new teeth as well, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna use some white modeling paste. And I wanna roll it really small. And I never get little bits like this quite right. They always end up going a little bit wrong. Quite kind of snake-like, aren't they, these? If I'm, or if I make them really long, I think they will be. Oh, that was just longer than the other. The tiny. Tiny, tiny. Now, to get them in place, I think it's going to be tricky. Because if I wet the mouth, all the lipstick's going to um, smudge a lot. So let's try wetting the teeth. Although even the tiniest bit of water seems to be drenching them. Okay, let's see if we can pick it up with the craft knife. And then I'm going to see if I can slot these into place. Now these definitely look like monster high kind of things now. One of the teeth is a little bit longer than the other. Let's see if we can take that out and change it. Okay, try again, see if we can get this one in. Okay, it's coming a little bit better. I'm not convinced it's quite the same thickness as the other tooth. Looks a bit wonky. Maybe we can squeeze the other one. Oh, I was going to say let's squeeze the other one thinner, but instead I've just taken it back out. Okay, I think I'm going to settle for uneven teeth on this one. Could even get a tiny, tiny row of teeth in between, I think, if I take just a really tiny piece. Really small. Possibly, we'll see. Can you guys see those there? So it's just a little sort of sausage shape that I've pressed a tiny, tiny. They've pressed in and then sort of pushed up against the roof of the mouth a little bit. Those ones a bit long, do we think? I thought they're more snake-like and less vampire-like if I make them really long. Should she have similar ones? Okay, so we've rolled a little piece. Let's see if we can cut it in half. Now, normally I'm not too worried if I don't get it in half, but because they're so small, I think even the tiniest bit of difference, we're going to really actually notice. And I might even see if we can do two really tiny ones. I'm going to try putting the water on the mouth area this time, actually. I know I said not to, but I just want to be really careful. So I've kind of got holes where the main fangs are going to go anyway. But I'm going to have to be really careful not to catch the lipstick when I do this. We can always go back over and paint more lipstick on, but I don't want to smudge the lipstick all over the face. So if we start with one of the larger teeth first going in. 
push that in place. That's in. Then let's try a small one. The small ones might be just a bit too big, a bit too much. Yeah, I think they might be a bit too much. So we can go smaller with them if we're very, very careful. See, they look so small, and then when you put them against the face, then they end up being massive. So it's like the tiniest triangle. And then let's see if we can get that in there. Can you see that one? So let's see if we can put a small triangle in first at this side. I'm trying to just kind of squeeze it up and a little bit smaller with my craft knife. And then let's put that little fang in. And I mean, you can have the fangs curving around as well if you want, they don't have to be straight. Okay. I don't know, what do you guys think? With or without that second little set? I can just nudge them up to make them a bit smaller each time. I don't know if I like the fangs curved or straight. I'm going to straighten them out a bit. Which do we think? Teeth-wise, which do we prefer? Let's get some eyelashes on. So I just want a little bit of black modeling paste. We're not going to need much. Can't decide whether to give her eyebrows or whether to just leave them as they are. Or maybe she should have some kind of weird eyebrow that's attached, I'm not sure. Anyway, eyelashes. Let's do some eyelashes. So I'm going to roll a nice thin piece of my black modeling paste. Longer than I need. You guys will have seen me do this lots of times before I realize in the mold classes, or the mold videos that we've got on here. So just try and get two. Don't worry if they're not the same length, but what I want you to look out for is that they're about the same thickness at the end, because that's where it's gonna matter. And I'm gonna cut some off, because I don't need it to be quite as long as that. So I'm gonna have a look at what length it comes to on. That is very difficult to judge. I reckon it's about the length of one of these squares, which is about half a half an inch. And I'm going to cut from that point outwards an angle. So instead of cutting straight across there, we're going to cut out at an angle so we get like a long thin bit. Let's try and get this one the same. You can always, if it's not long and thin enough on the outer edge, you can always just give it a bit more of a roll. Okay. And then I'm going to just cut a little bit of water along the edge of the eye. So just be careful now that you're not smudging everything that you put on there before so we can see I've just cut a bit of the black in the eye and it's just run a little bit there. If it helps, just go just onto the eyelid rather than catching sort of the pupil. You might even find you don't want to add eyelashes if you like your creatures without. It's fine, you can leave them without. And try and get it into the corner of the eye, that water. Then let's curve it slightly. Let's see if we can get that in place then. It might even be too long still. It's a little bit too long, but do you know what? I like it long. It's just that the longer it is, the more it wants to snap off. But I like that. Sticking out like that, I think it's nice. Okay, so let's do the same on the other eye. Just make sure you push it into the corner. I want it to follow the shape of the eye like it does on the other one as well. Do they look about even, do you think? Probably not. Okay, so she's got some big long lashes, is that one? No, I think I'm gonna leave her without on the bottom. I was gonna put bottom ones on, but I like her as she is, so I don't think I'm gonna add bottom lashes. And on this one, we're gonna do the same thing again, but instead of measuring it first, we're gonna cut it once it's on there. I'm gonna cut it to the length we want. 
that. So let's get two long thin points. Water on. Okay, just make sure there's not too much water, otherwise, it will take all the black food colouring out of the paste and it will um, spread across your face. Just put some water on this one quickly now. The water does take off any powder that you've put on, so just be careful of that. Okay, so this time we can cut it in place, but cut at an angle. Okay, do the same on the other one. Get into the corner. It is difficult to get it the same on both sides, I usually don't. It's a little bit longer on this one than the other one. And this one sort of has more of a curled up flick on it. There we go, it's okay. You can either leave it to come around the side of the face or just bring it up so you can see it from the front. So if you flick it outwards, you'll see it a bit more from the front. No, do we think these ladies need eyebrows or not? I'm thinking of my girlfriend green, a bit of green paste. So I don't know whether to use some dark green or some blue, or maybe I should mix the two together. Let's just have a little look at what this colour looks like. Matches the lips. Definitely matches the lips. Maybe she could have one big more on one eyebrow, this one. I prefer the ones where I've actually done less to them and it's just like a bit of patterning on, I think. We'll see, we'll see what this one looks like when it's finished though. Okay, so we're gonna take some of this color. We'll just take some small bits. Let's roll thin end, thick end. We'll have a more like human eyebrows, I think. They don't need to be as long as that, but we'll stick them on that length. Okay, so I'm gonna just put a bit of water above the eye where I want them to go. And I'm going to stick the thin bit towards the outer edge and bring the thicker bit round. And then where it meets about in line with the eye, I'm just going to cut it. And as long as it's not stuck too much in place, you should be able to play around with that a little bit for moving it on the face. See if we can get the other one similar. I'm giving it a fairly high arch, this one. And just see if we can lift it up a little bit on the inside corner. I'm just going to kind of repeat some similar steps on this one to the other ones. I'm going to use a pen around the eye. And if you want to keep it solid colour, you don't have to blend it out. You can just leave it as a solid line. You might blend it out underneath, but leave it solid at the top. I doubt I'll get it the same on the other side. Maybe put a little line along each of these little scaly bits. Along that sort of bottom edge of each one. And I reckon I'll probably spread these with a bit of water, just so these are less of a harsh line.
going to put a bit of black inside the mouth if I can. Now, do I leave this one without teeth? Or do I give this one teeth? Maybe it should have teeth. I feel like maybe it should have something like that that comes onto the forehead as well. Oh, I can't decide. Or maybe it should just have spots on the forehead a bit like that one. Let's go spots. Let's put teeth in the same way as we did on those ones, I think. Well, actually, I might just put just a set of just white teeth in without fangs on this one. So I can get a tiny piece, tiny, tiny piece. Curved it round a tiny bit, let's put a bit of water on. And let's see if we can get it to stay in place. No, nope, can't pick it up. <laughs> so let's just try pushing it in with our hand instead. I'm going to try and nudge it up so it just comes out from under that bottom lip. It's a little bit less scary now. It doesn't have like fangs or teeth like the other ones. No, it's just got like a plain white set of teeth in the top. And I've just got the black felt pen on the top lip, so I'm just gonna blend that out a little bit. Try not to paint it all over the face. Okay, and then some eyelashes. And in fact, you know what we might do on this one? We might draw the eyelashes on. So I've stuck them on on the other one, so let's draw them on with a pen on this one. So I'm trying to get my pen along that edge. And we'll take it along there to a nice point. Let's see if we can get it into the corner of the eye there. And maybe put another lash on just there. Maybe even another one. Let's have three. And a tiny line just along the bottom edge now. If you struggle to, in fact, I'm going to do a little lash coming downwards as well. If you struggle to get the line thin with the pen, you should brush, if it's a thin brush, to drag it down across the eye. Because I've got some black on there now, I could probably put in that inside corner and underneath the eye already. See if I can get some white little sparkly bits in their eyes, guys, as well. Just gonna roll some little pieces of white. Like when we do the fangs. And let's pop that in there. It's quite a big white streak, is that bit? <laughs> it's fine. white a bit dirty in that one. So I'm not going to do the same in each of these. This one, I'm tempted to not put whites in and maybe just put some glaze in at some point. I'm going to swap and put some dots of white in their eyes, I think, instead. I'm going to use some fractal powder dust and we're going to mix it into a paint. Um, I do sometimes use my white pen. I'm not sure where I've put my white pen. So we'll mix a paint today. So we'll put a tiny bit of like dip in solution or you can use clear alcohol. So we just wanna mix it into a paint. Okay, so we'll put a tiny bit on the end of a little ball in tool. You can use like a cocktail stick or paintbrush if you want. But let's start by putting in this one. I'm gonna put a dot in this one as well as that line. Let's put a dot in this one. I'm trying to put it in the same place in each eye. 
it's possible that the white might absorb the colour from the pens. Um, we'll have to see. So there they are guys, my, let's call them sea serpents slash monster faces using the moulds. So most of them were done using the Abbey one, which is the original mould with the eye sockets in, which are those three. And then that one was the original mould that doesn't have the eye sockets in, is that one, because I used that one by accident. I didn't mean to. <laughs> so I forgot to tell you guys, I did, I have now officially named this because the original face moulds I made, I had two. I had one with eyes, one without. And they didn't have any name. And then when I made the third female face, I called it Gemma. But then it's confusing because the others weren't named. So I have named this one Abby. So if you're looking online for it, uh, it's now called Abby. And here they are added to some bodies, guys. So they look quite different now. I've given them like their limp hair and ears. And guys, I am going to do a tutorial for the bodies, but it's not going to be a YouTube one. And you'll be able to find that soon over on my website. So... I'll let you all know when the details for that are out and ready. Don't forget to check out the other videos, guys, using the moulds. And if you do get around to making them, I'd love to see pictures of what you've made. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.